Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to start a new topic of discussion, which is on transmission line theory. For this video, okay, I'm going to explain the difference between transmission line theory and circuit theory. So in short, the key difference will be the electrical size, which we are going to take a closer look later on. So maybe let me kick start by the discussion on circuit theory. What is actually circuit theory? In short, circuit theory allow us to apply Kirchhoff voltage law, Kirchhoff current law. So basically in short, under this circuit theory, the cable will be a perfect short circuit. Things change okay, under transmission line theory because the length of the trans transmission line is considered long as compared to the wavelength of the signal. So hence, we cannot longer consider the transmission line as a perfect short circuit. Because okay, of the length, there will be a change, a vary of impedance. So when actually impedance vary, the current and voltage also vary because of the Ohm law. That's why we are going to take a closer look on this transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for song support. Like I mentioned earlier on, the key difference between transmission line theory and circuit theory is actually the electrical size. What is actually electrical size? Let's take a look on these two signals under circuit theory and also under transmission line theory. So under circuit theory, typically is so-called DC or low frequency. So this signal having a low frequency will have a long wavelength. While this signal under the transmission line theory with high frequency, you can see that the wavelength will be short. So basically in short, what is actually electrical size? So this you can consider to have a long electrical size because it actually has a long wavelength. While for this case here, under transmission line theory, okay, it can consider having a short electrical length because okay, it actually has a short wavelength. So because of this, okay, let's come to this transmission line theory first. Because of this, you can see that this is actually the length of the transmission line. And because of high frequency, the wavelength is relatively short. So therefore, the length of the transmission line can be equivalent to a few wavelength of the signal. So this is what you want to say over here. Transmission line may be a considerable fraction of a wavelength or even many wavelength in size. So this is what you mean. So basically these are many wavelength in size as compared to the length of the transmission line. As for circuit theory, okay, so mainly deploy for DC or low frequency, it actually assume that the physical dimension of the network, okay, so basically this is actually the physical dimension of the cable, they are much smaller as compared to the electrical wavelength. So they are in fact shorter than this electrical wavelength under circuit theory. So basically there is a key difference between transmission line and circuit theory. Let me use another slide to further explain this concept. Okay, so you can see from this diagram here, this will be the source, this will be the load. So in between the source and load will be the transmission line. Okay, so let's say I apply a signal at point A. And what will be the signal at point B? Okay, so under circuit theory, okay, you can imagine that okay, basically the voltage at point A will be the same at point B, okay, according to the Ohm's law. Because the cable is actually a perfect short circuit. However, things change when under transmission line theory. So therefore, under this transmission line theory, this won't be a cable. This will be a transmission line. So under the equivalent circuit of the transmission line, it will consist of shunt C, 
and Series L. So basically, we with all this, okay, it actually delay the speed of propagation. Under the circuit theory, you can imagine that the speed of propagation is at infinite or maybe at the speed of the light, which they can travel from point A to point B. However, with the lump element okay, of, let's say, the Shan C and the Series L, the speed of propagation reduced. So basically with this, you can imagine that it will be act like a wave. A wave actually propagate from point A to point B. And this is what we call the transmission line theory. Okay, so therefore, for transmission line theory, since it need to propagate from point A to point B, so hence there will be a change of impedance, which also indirectly change the voltage and also the current at any point of the transmission line. Let me further explain this. Okay, so basically this is the long so-called transmission line. So you have heard me just now, okay, regards on this point here. Okay, so if the transmission line is very short as compared to the wavelength, then we can use circuit theory, okay, to explain the equivalent circuit of this transmission line. So what we are going to do under this case here is we are going to break the long transmission line into many, many, many short transmission line. So as I explained earlier on, with short transmission line, then we can actually represent them as a equivalent lump element, as you can see from here. Because the length of the long transmission line under sub 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 so-called division, it becomes short. So once they become short as compared to the wavelength of a signal, then we can use this equivalent lump element to represent this short session of the transmission line. From here, you can see that basically mainly make up of series L and shan C. Okay, so let's neglect away the resistor value as for now. So you can see that mainly make up of series L and shan C. Okay, so basically this is the equivalent circuit of a very small length of the total transmission line and we can represent by this equivalent circuit. Let's quickly understand a little bit more. Okay, so in transmission line, the inductors L and capacitor C per unit length actually introduce a delay in the propagation of electrical signal. So I'm going to give you the reason why. Coming to the basic concept of wave propagation in transmission line. So basically a transmission line can be modeled as a distribution network of series inductor and shan C, as I mentioned earlier on. Let's firstly omit away all the resistor. So basically from here, you can see that it will be a series L and a shan C, as he mentioned over here. So when a voltage signal is applied, so when we actually apply a voltage signal over here, the inductor will resist the sudden change in current. Okay, so you know the key purpose of inductor, they actually can maintain the current, can maintain the current constant. So when there is a changes in current, they will try to resist the change. This is what he said over here. The inductor will resist the sudden change in current while the capacitor will resist the sudden change in voltage. So the capacitor over here will maintain the voltage and they will actually resist sudden change in terms of the value of voltage. This interaction actually causes the signal to propagate as a wave rather than instantly. Okay, so without this L and C, you can imagine that the instantaneous voltage will appear on the other end. Okay, so they will not propagate. But because of the L and C, okay, it behave like a wave. So once they behave like a wave, they need to propagate from a point A to point B. Okay, so basically this is the reason why. Next, let's come to the propagation delay due to L and C. Okay, so you have see this formula here. The speed of propagation okay, in a transmission line is basically governed by this equation. You can see that the speed of propagation is a function of L, which is the value of the inductor and also the value of the capacitor. So in short, from this formula here, you can see that the higher the L, which means the higher the value of the inductor, this will slow down the signal propagation okay, because okay, it's going to have a harder time to oppose the rapid current change. Same for the higher C. So if we have the higher C, it actually will slow down the signal propagation because 
it take time to charge or discharge the line. Okay, so thus, the more L and C per unit length, the slower the signal travel. So therefore, because of the LC, okay, the speed of propagation actually reduce. So therefore, the signal will not be able to instantly travel from point A to point B. So this is the reason why, because of the LC. Next. Okay, so before I continue, guys, if you have learned something from this video, urge you to help me by like this video. When more, more of you guys actually help to like this video, this video will have a better chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, give me a few seconds. Help me press the like button now. If you again okay, learn something and you want to encourage me, okay, one of the best ways is to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much. Let me continue. Okay, so in short, okay, in a very short, simple explanation, inductor L actually will be against the current change. Okay, so therefore, they actually cause a lag. While for capacitor, they will be like a storage. So they actually need time to fill out the charges before the voltage can build out. Together, the L and C, they actually create a low pass filter. Like I mentioned that, let's omit all the resistor. So from here, you can see that it actually like a low pass filter. And hence, this actually will delay the high frequency component. Okay, so a typical example will be coaxial cable. So a typical coaxial cable, they have this L250 nano Henry as for C, which is 100 picofarad per meter here. So we can easily calculate the propagation speed from this equation, 1 over square root of LC. So from here, you can compute that. Okay, the velocity to propagate so called inside the coaxial cable will be 2 times 10 to 8 meter per second, which is about two-thirds the speed of the light. So if we can further increase the L and C, then the velocity will further reduce. Do a very quick comparison to speed of light. So in the vacuum, okay, you know that signal basically travel at the speed of the light, which is 3 times 10 to 8 meter per second. However, in a transmission line, okay, so it's not longer so-called in the air or vacuum. Okay, we have this relative permeability and also relative per, uh, permeability and permeability okay, of the dielectric. So all this actually further slow down the signal as you can see from here. Okay, so basically when you actually increase, so under vacuum, this will be equal to one. So under, let's say, coaxial cable, the material actually change and therefore all this change this actually further contribute the delay. Next, transmission line, okay, we actually consider them as a distributed parameters network, okay, where voltage and current, they actually vary in magnitude and phase over its length. While circuit theory deal with lump element, where voltage and current do not really vary along the physical dimension of the element. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier on. A transmission line is often schematically represent as a two-wire line since transmission line always have at least two conductor. So, like I mentioned earlier on, if we can consider a very small section of transmission line, then we can actually use the lump element to represent this short, so-called short length of this transmission line. Let me continue this. So basically, this will be the lump element which I have explained earlier on. Okay, so I just want to put all the so-called unit over here. Okay, but I'm going to derive the formula on my next video. Okay, so just, just put it here to in order to make my completion complete. Okay, so let's come to the assumption and the applicability for circuit theory and also for the transmission line theory. Okay, so assume that electrical components such as resistor, capacitor, and inductor, they are all lumped okay, under this circuit theory. And the physical dimension of the circuit are much smaller as compared to the wavelength of the signal. So this circuit theory, they actually work well for low frequency. Okay, so DC or very low frequency under this AC where wavelength is large as compared to the circuit size. So for this case here, under the circuit theory, we will ignore the wave propagation effect. So there won't be any time delay in signal transmission. However, for transmission line theory, we consider this as a distributed model. Okay, so therefore we need to consider the distributed nature of the electrical parameters. For example, the resistor, inductors, capacitor, and even the conductance per unit length. So when the circuit size is comparable 
or larger than the signal wavelength, then we need to consider the cable as a distributed element as using this transmission line theory to describe the behavior. So therefore, with this, you actually need to account for wave propagation, reflection, and impedance matching. As for signal behavior, under circuit theory, we can actually treat the voltage and current as the same at all points in a node. Okay, so basically, as I mentioned earlier on, a wire, okay, so the voltage will be the same, the current can easily flow through. So therefore, we can also easily apply this Kirchhoff voltage law and Kirchhoff current law. But for transmission line theory, the voltage and current actually vary along the line okay, due to wave propagation. Okay, because the voltage also change, the vote uh, sorry, because the impedance also change, so the voltage and current will also change. We also must account for the time delay and also the phase shift due to the finite propagation speed. So this actually requires us to use this heliography equation, which I'm going to describe on my next video. Okay, so this actually helps to describe the wave behavior. The third one, under the key parameters, so for circuit element, it's just using the lump element RLC, which will not be concentrated in this video here. So impedance is simply the ratio of voltage to current under the Ohm's law. As for transmission line theory, we need to use the distributed parameters. So we have the series resistor and also the inductor per unit length. We also have the shunt conductor and also the capacitor per unit length. So how to compute the characteristics impedance will be by this equation. Okay, so this equation allows us to calculate the characteristics impedance of the transmission line. As for the propagation constant, we'll be using this equation, okay, which I will describe on my next few video here. Okay, but just want to show you the key so-called description to describe the transmission line. Next, under the effect, okay, so for circuit theory, okay, we actually neglect all the EM wave effect. So there won't be any consideration for any reflection or standing wave. But for transmission line theory, we need to account for reflection. Okay, we know that okay, S11, okay, we, we need to take care of the reflection okay, because there is so-called an impedance mismatch. So therefore, we need to insert so-called uh, impedance transformer okay, in order to ensure and minimize any impedance mismatch. We also need to take care of the standing wave Okay, when this reflection actually interface with the incident wave, we also need to take care of the signal integrity issue. For example, we need to ensure that there won't be ringing, crosstalk, etc. under this high-speed circuit. Under number five, when to use which? Okay, so we need to use circuit theory when the circuit dimension are very, very much shorter or smaller as compared to the wavelength of the signal. Okay, so basically with this, you can easily use the Ohm's law to do the circuit analysis. But un after the other case here, then you need to use this transmission line theory, which I will explain uh, later on. Okay, so basically we deal with low frequency power system or analog circuit. Okay, for example, our audio frequency. Okay, we will only use transmission line circuit okay, when the circuit size is considered very so-called large as compared to the lambda over 10. Okay, so basically, typically for this environment, we work with RF, microwave, or high-speed digital signal. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Over this video here, you can see that I actually compare the circuit theory with the transmission line theory. With this, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.